Just when we thought China couldn't have any bigger of an influence on XRP and the rest of the crypto markets, well, we've been proven wrong once again. And I'm going to cover that and a lot more of really important information that you definitely need to be aware about right now. So what I need all of you guys to do is to absolutely obliterate that like button so everybody in the crypto space sees this video and let's get into it. So listen, before we get into the China news, there is a lot of crazy macroeconomic things that are happening right now that a lot of people uh, just are taken aback by, myself included. Now, the first thing which I want to talk about is the FBI has started creating their own crypto tokens. Now, recently, they created a crypto token called Next Fund AI to catch 18 suspects for fraud and market manipulation. We're talking about large scale operations from federal agencies now, undercover creating crypto projects. If that doesn't concern you in any capacity, I don't know what to say because I did a little bit more research into what's going on with this specifically. And what we found is that there was actually six different companies and 18 different ind individuals that were involved in this. We're talking about billions and billions of dollars being used for market manipulation and the FBI is catching them. Now, there's two ways to look at this. One, you could say the FBI should just stay out of crypto. And two, you should you could say, I mean, it's good that people are starting to crack down on uh, you know people that are manipulating markets. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think this is a good or bad thing for the crypto market? Overall, I think that it shows a certain level of corruption because one thing we all do know is that BlackRock is manipulating the markets absolutely and the FBI is never going to investigate them and the SEC is never going to file some kind of lawsuit against them because, well, BlackRock is in both of their pockets. So in my point of view, this looks like a weaponized federal agency that's being used to take out BlackRock's competitors. And of course, BlackRock is going to just have free reign over the market. So really, all in all, this seems like a giant power grab. Now, outside of that, we need to talk about the economy, okay? Because there's a lot of things happening in the economy, both in China and the United States of America. But there's one very particular index, which you are looking at on screen right here. It is called the uncertainty index. Now, a really important uncertainty index is the small business uncertainty because 48% of the US's GDP does come from small business. And of course, CEOs of large corporations basically make up the rest of that GDP gap. So between large scale corporations and small businesses, you basically have the entire US economy, right? And what we've found is that there is really high levels of uncertainty right now on the prospects of the future for small businesses. And this is going to have a ripple effect in the economy. Now, one thing you guys will also remember is in my last video, I also talked about the fact that, or Patrick Beck David talked about the fact that CEOs are also really uncertain. But let's read through this really quick because there's some crucial information here. This indicator has now even exceeded the 2020 pandemic levels when the economy was in a complete lockdown. Inflation, elevated interest rates, failing or falling earnings, and election uncertainty all make a tough environment for small businesses to successfully operate. As a result, business owners' investing plans are their lowest since the 2020 pandemic. Small businesses are in a recession. That is a really telling sign. Why is it that small businesses do not want to put any more money into scaling their operations right now, hiring new staff, or doing any of the like? It's because it's extremely risky. On one hand, you could have a federal government that is elected that completely destroys your business. And on the other, you could have the money printer go back online and we could see a similar things happen during the 2020 pandemic when you're getting shut down completely. Either of which is not good for a small business owner. Now, what we can also see is U.S. prosecutors did charge 14 people in this company fraud that I just told you guys about, and there's four companies involved, not six. So my bad there. But these names have yet to be released, and the reason for that is likely because there are more people involved, and this is an ongoing investigation. So 
when we have more information on this prosecutor's case and all these people that are being charged with fraud and the FBI's secret next fund AI, well, I'm going to have a lot to talk about. Now, another thing <laughs> that we're moving seeing uh, is, you know, a lot of interesting discussion in the XRP community, right? There's been a lot of ETF filings that are happening. And one thing that I want to talk about is that, well, it's extremely likely in my perspective that we're going to be seeing uh, large scale ETF filing soon. I mean, we've gotten a couple smaller uh, organizations like Bitwise and so forth filing for these ETFs, and this is a blow off top event. And right now, I think if you guys aren't trading around this, you're missing out on an insane opportunity because XRP just went through a little bit of a correction, right? And we've already seen the effects of a BlackRock ETF on Bitcoin and a Grayscale ETF on Bitcoin. And I do think that this is right around the corner for XRP. So right now, I do believe is a tremendous buying opportunity for XRP for two reasons. Number one, um, it is you know a very solid oversold position right now on the stochastic RSI. And number two, there are many positive potential headwinds happening. Number one, the SEC case ending right which a lot of people are talking about on twitter right now positive news event is going to cause a meteoric rise for xrp number two these xrp etfs that are being filed for we have yet to see any positive price action come from it but like i was saying there's a reason why all of these organizations are actually filing for these etfs it's because they believe there is a probably a really strong uh, fundamental basis for them to get approved for these, and that's going to allow a lot more capital to come into XRP. So I think right now doing a 5 to 10x long position on XRP is a really good play. That's precisely why I have two long positions open on XRP, and I do think the current price that we're at of you know the 52 cent range is a phenomenal buying opportunity. And anything below 52 cents as well, phenomenal buying. I would say it's probably a good idea to stop longing XRP once you get past 50 55 cents but nonetheless right now we have that opportunity so i think it'd be a shame for all of you guys not to take advantage of it and if you guys use my margex link down below to sign up and trade you're also going to get a 100 deposit bonus and you'll be entered into our trading competition which will be going until the end of the month which will give you xrp rewards as well all right so that was great let's finally go ahead and get into the china bitcoin news Let's play this clip right here. Some really crucial information here, guys. Recently, of course, is obviously the Fed cutting 50 basis points, but also the coordinated central bank's uh, efforts to also cut as well. So whether this is the ECB, the Bank of England, the Bank of Canada, et cetera. So we do have clear tailwinds as it relates to global liquidity picking up, which you know, has a direct impact on risk assets and particularly Bitcoin and, of course, the longer tail of tokens in crypto. But the most interesting thing to me uh, is the news that's recently come out of China. Um, I know we saw ahead of the Golden Week in China, which is October 1st through the 7th, which just ended you know, last night. The uh, PBOC and you know the broad kind of finance ministry, if you will, of, of China came out with some pretty accommodative, um, stimulative policies for not only you know, the banks and helping recapitalize them, uh, but also for, you know, consumers, you know, China has a domestic demand problem. It's not a new thing. If you look at anything over the past, you know, even the, I think it's the last 11 quarters, they've had a uh, pretty persistent state of deflation. This is a problem for some place like China, uh, where they're an export driven economy. And if their domestic demand is effectively zero in terms of growth, uh, they need to fix that. And so there is actually a pretty strong correlation between the expansion of China M1 money supply. So these are deposits that are not necessarily just going in savings account like M2 uh, and the price of Bitcoin. So what we saw at the beginning of the year, yes, we knew the ETF was coming. Uh, we knew that there was going to be a strong narrative behind those ETF flows. And that actually did happen. But um, what a lot of people didn't see was the expansion of M1 money supply in China as a direct correlation to, to Bitcoin's price improvement. How does that fit into all of the other catalysts that are kind of at play for Bitcoin right now? It's it, it kind of sounds like this idea that we're you know probably going to retest the all time high by the end of the year probably even break that and get another all time high is still um, a likelihood. But uh, what, you know, given everything you just said, how would you place that among the other themes? And what would you say is sort of the dominant theme to get us to those new records later this year? Yeah, I mean, it's all connected. And so, you know, if you zoom way out and you just kind of look at, say, the global liquidity picture, global liquidity bottomed in October of 2022. 
these liquidity cycles tend to last between five and six years. We're not quite halfway through that yet, and we're just now starting to see tailwinds pick up on the global liquidity side. The reason I highlight China is, you know, I wrote in our latest asymmetric market update um, this past weekend is that they're kind of like the final boss as it relates to all time highs in crypto. The macro is lining up perfectly for Bitcoin to make new all time highs later this year. But the, the kind of catalyst or really the accelerant, I think, has a lot to do with policy that comes out of China. So, you know, if you look at um, uh, the global liquidity picture today, we keep hitting new all time highs every week. And that's whether that's, you know, collateral ratios improving on U.S. treasuries that are deposited as collateral or it's actually the expansion of, you know, uh, central bank balance sheets or easing policies that they put in place. These are all naturally accretive to things like Bitcoin. I do think that Southeast Asia, being that it is about 70 to 80 percent of global trading volume as it relates to crypto. And yes, crypto and Bitcoin is banned within China. Um, but as you start to see a loosening of monetary policy in the region, that tends to spread to the broader region throughout Southeast Asia. And so from our perspective, yes, we're going to see things like the TGA being drained by law. Yellen has to spend that money. That's accretive to liquidity. There is the potential for rules changes to the discount window to remove the taboo effect of banks actually posting uh, collateral to the discount window and receiving cash. That could be stimulative to uh, liquidity here in the United States. But ultimately, what ends up happening in Southeast Asia, we think actually is going to be the thing that drives um, Bitcoin to no all time highs. Right. So, I mean, yeah, that is uh, that's pretty exciting stuff. And and this is very true. What he was mentioning here is China is essentially the final boss. And of course, once China starts seeing that final bit of liquidity, XRP is going to go to the absolute stratosphere. And so that's what we really need to be looking out for. It is possible we'll have a bit of a correction in October slash November. Don't get me wrong. But I do, th I do think towards the end of the year and early on next year, we're going to start seeing some very bullish market conditions, and that is where all of our money is going to be made. So in the short term, yes, we absolutely have a great opportunity to go long on XRP and make use of a lot of this positive ETF news that we've been seeing because you know XRP is just waiting to have that blow off top. And of course, in the more longer term, we also have a great opportunity to just continue dollar cost averaging XRP. XRP and a few other altcoins while we wait for more Bitcoin liquidity to come in a little bit later on. So if you guys are excited for all of this and you want more people to find out, smash that like button so everyone is aware and subscribe for more videos. And don't forget to sign up and trade on Margex using my link. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.